Hi, welcome to my garden. So, my first video, please be gentle. <laughs> um, this is the garden we have here at the house. It's a little semi-homestead here on the mountains in Catalonia, Spain. Um, I thought I would share a bit of our experience. Um, I've also got another garden close by where, where I grow for a cooperative. I run a veggie garden there, semi-market veggie garden, also feeds the house. Um, and there we've got uh, European volunteers and um, it's much bigger and we can do a bit more there. But home here is, is my little zone of meditation. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of the garden and I hope you enjoy. Well, we can start with the chickens since they're being all loud. I've got some breast eggs incubating at the moment and we're hopefully going to get a little flock of breasts to do both eggs and meat production. There's American breasts, I think, is the breed, although officially it comes from France. So here we have the main piece of the garden, which is two grocery row gardens. Um, I've done these uh, Hugel grocery row gardens, so they're actually got they're done as Hugel cultures, but also in the design style of David the Good's grocery row gardener. Um, check out his channel, David the Good, for more awesome stuff. I'll have a link in the description below. Um, so this to give you a brief rundown. Um, of what it is, is basically um, sort of combining permaculture food forests, edge concepts, as well as uh, a syntropic agriculture, um, and combining the, grow the growing of both trees and shrubs, so perennials and annuals in the spaces in between. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how they're coming along. We're here now on the 25th of April, and uh, well, the season's in full swing. So let's start with this one. We've got here garlics going all around the edges of both the hugel beds there and there as well. Um, I thought it was gonna help me against the voles. However, it hasn't been so successful. They've actually eaten a couple of the garlics. And as you can see, I got problems. <laughs> but as long as they don't eat too much and I can try and grow enough that it's an ever puzzle they're going to get some then will should be okay then i've got purple raspberries here and then onions and lettuces interplanted coming along then i've got here a little fig tree cutting these are green figs uh, followed by some beautiful first early potatoes some cauliflowers i believe these are going to be and some seven week uh, cabbages too. Again, more onions a bit planted around. And here we've got a little baby pomegranate. This was a seedling started a few years ago by some friends that gave it to me. On the other side here, we've got a little seedling, peach seedling that I sprouted this winter. And it's coming along very nicely. As you can see, along with their annuals, uh, the perennials, sorry. We've got annuals. Here's a beautiful green cauliflower. Lovely colour on that. I'm not sure if, the, if it's showing up. It's a very nice colour. Little broccoli. And some leeks and different bits and bobs. Then here we've got raspberries. Again at the end. Some purple sprouting broccoli. Uh, leeks, and these are some pak choy that I let go to seed that uh, hopefully will be seed for this year, and some beautiful kohlrabis. Uh, the bees, everything seems to be very grateful for these flowers this early in the season, from these mighty great purple kohlrabis. And then here we've got some and more raspberries, some beautiful purple potatoes, purple potatoes, a variety that I just picked up a bag from the supermarket that I saw they had some purple 
with some white speckles inside. They're very nice. Growing alongside here, a Dirospirus lotus, which is a date plum. Essentially, it's a type of khaki that does the little little baby persimmons. Um, I'm quite intrigued to try them. Let's see. It's still a while yet, though. It's still a little baby. So that's the two grossy row Hugel grow. Uh, see, well, we'll first call it stick with grocery row gardens uh, because it was David the Good who inspired me to do them. Check out his book and his channel. Um, here we got some uh, fruit trees I'm doing in backyard orchard style. Um, so we've got here. These are uh, green gauges, so they're going to grow and self-pollinate, uh, self-pollinate, sorry, cross-pollinate between them to have greater fruit production. Um, and then here I've done the same, but with three different varieties of apple, so that they can give a harvest over a longer period of time um, and also help with pollination and get, I like that, will get good fruit set. Uh, all of these, including the trees in the grocery row gardens, are going to be heavily pruned um, to keep them short and stout and productive but without taking too much space so I can continue to grow annuals alongside with them. As you can see I overwintered onions and these onions are sort of finishing off now. Um, they're not going to be very big but I've got other onions planted. Excuse me, I seem the camera cut out there for a minute. Uh, so we've come back into the greenhouse and here we've got some dwarf tomatoes that I did recent, uh, this year, first year growing them. Pink Passion, Fred's Tie-Dye, Egypt Yellow, Rosella Purple, and 42 Days. Uh, 42 Days is supposedly does fruit from seed in 42 days, so uh, I'm pretty excited about that. As you can see, it's already full of flower, and we're already on the, on the 25th of April. Although we've been having a unseasonally warm and very dry spring, we're in the third year of a drought, unfortunately. And this year seems to be the hardest so far. Uh, Catalonia is pretty hard hit by the drought. Uh, worst place, one of the worst zones in Spain actually. Some cappuccino, uh, nasturtium there. And some more lettuces I'm doing for seed. And I've already got cucumbers and I've even got some melons planted that seem to be doing very well. And I've got... Uh, a courgette, or zucchini, depending on what you like to call it, plant coming along. Some sweet potatoes that I'm going to grow, I'm growing for slips. And then aubergine and tomato seedlings that I've got for the other garden. So, uh, these are all the tomatoes we're going to be doing over there at the cooperative this year. And some, uh, an avocado plant that, uh, it's a Mex Mexicola seedling. Uh, it's been a bit damaged this winter, because I had it outside relatively unprotected, so but it's grown back. It was just stalk, and uh, it's completely grown back this spring. So let's see what it can do. Uh, Olwari Satsuma, that I am letting flower and fruit because I'm very tempted to see what it gives in terms of fruit. And she's only little, but I'll, I'll let her keep a few fruit just to, just to try them. So here these are more potatoes. These are again the first, same first earlies that I have over there in the grocery row garden. And the same purple ones that are coming up there. And then some more longer term ones that are just starting to come up now. And some mid-term ones, the Mona Lisa and Kennebec. And those are all Federica. The Federicas I'm hoping to turn around and in July come back and plant more Federicas and be able to get two harvests of the first earlies before frost comes. We, we have a long enough season here. We shouldn't have a problem. And then I've got uh, my pea plot, which is going to be for the pumpkins afterwards. So pumpkins are going to come after these peas. Um, and I've got the broad beans that are flowering now in beautifully in full flower, as you can see. We're a bit later in the day now, but the bees are in the day loving these. And I've planted parsnips alongside, so hopefully the parsnips will sprout soon. And here we've got some st the new strawberry plot that I just planted this year, so it's very early and I'm picking off all the flowers so that it can, can grow for now. Okay, strong and a little carrot plot. 
Now the last line didn't germination wasn't as good. I'm not sure if actually if it's the germination that wasn't as good or my lack of watering early on that led to a few of them dying there. I've thinned them out as well and hopefully I'll have a nice little harvest from these ones. A bit more, a few more raspberries. Um, here we've got a little self-pollinating kiwi plant that doesn't seem particularly happy. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. I've given it some, some fresh fertilizer in the pot and I've uh, watered it as well with some liquid organic fertilizer, some fish emulsion. Let's see, let's see if it can come around. But this dwarf's cherry on the other hand, looking very happy with how things are going. Well, ah, oh, that's a little blueberry that died back pretty badly a few years ago from uh, a lack of water when it was planted in the ground up at the house. Uh, but since I put it in a pot, it seems to have come back to life. Well, so thank you. And uh, I think I'm going to go back, sit in my chair and have a tea now. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, thank you very much for coming along. Um, I'll get hopefully much better at these videos. Uh, and uh, try and think of ideas and things to show. And show you all my journey, how it's going, what we're doing. and the problems that come along and how we overcome them. So see you next time. Thanks. Bye.